Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, people, if you can hear me, just raise your hands, inshallah. Uh, we wanted to start. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ba'd, rabbi shahli sadri wa yahsirli imri amri wa ahlal uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, presentation today, alhamdulillah, we have a special guest, uh, Dr. Sabil Ahmed, he is from Game Keys, and he's been doing this work uh, for some extensive time, and we wanted to uh, have him uh, do the presentation, and he's going to be talking about principles of da'wah. Without further ado, inshallah, I'll hand it over to uh, Dr. Sabil Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, was salatu was salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sabi admaina ma bat. When I would be lahim in a shaitani regime, Bismillah, Rahmani Rahim, Rabbish Rahili Sadri, Waja Silly Amri, Wahlul Ukdata Milisani of Kahu Kali. Everyone, welcome and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So, Alhamdulillah, today's topic is the principles of Dawah. So inshallah for the first 20 minutes, I will try to cover some of the basics. And then for the rest of the 40 minutes, I will give all of you equal amount of time or ample time for you to write your questions and Brother Azad is going to read out some of those questions inshallah. So this would be a one hour interaction. And the main topic is some of the basics and the principles of Dawah inshallah. All right, with that being said, it's uh, really important for us to know that uh, about three years ago, I was traveling from Chicago to Houston. I believe this was a Dawa, not a Dawa training, it was a Masjid open house. So when I went uh, inside the plane, I was looking at my seat and lo and behold, I found out that my seat was right, in, it was a middle seat and surrounding me were the US Army personnel. Right, low and, you know, first and foremost, we, we avoid the middle seat, and uh, then you are surrounded by the people. Uh, that itself is not the most uh, comfortable of the situations that you want to be in. So my intention was to, was to take a nap, so I can be fresh for the Masjid open house. But then the way that I was sitting in the middle and surrounded by the people, I prayed to Allah, the, oh Allah, this is your choice, not my choice. So make it easy for me to convey the message of Islam to the people who are around me. So lo and behold, Allah is the one who helps us. All we need to do is have the right intention, do the dua, and Allah would open the doors for us. So this is before, by the way. So this was a person who was sitting on my right side. And, and this is the after. About half an hour into the flight, the person or the people around me, the two people, one to the right, one to the left, they started to read a book about Islam that I gave it to them. And you may be thinking, you know, Brother Sabil, how is it possible that in the plane, surrounded by the US you know, Army personnel, uh, you know, anything that you do, any wrong thing according to them, you'll be news. You'll be news, you know, breaking news, CNN and Fox especially. But the point I'm trying to make is that Dawa is easy. Dawa is so simple, Dawa is so easy, it can be done anywhere. May that be plane, train, automobile, in the bus, on the bus stations, to the neighbors, with your colleagues, with your classmates. The best thing that we can do is to start a Dawa conversation would be to make them ask us the questions. Especially on the plane, you say something and you do something, not about Islam, by the way, but just to make them curious. So they ask you questions about Islam. And once they ask you questions, now it is a fair game. Now you can respond to them using hikmah. You know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah 16, Ayah number 125. And the Ayah continues that invite all to the way of Allah with wisdom and good preaching and converse with them in ways which are best and most gracious. 
So it is my habit, by the way, whenever I travel on the plane or in my car or in my backpack, I always carry Islamic literature. May that be the brochures, may that be the small one minute cards or some books, one or two or three books. So Alhamdulillah, in this plane um, uh, ride, I had a couple of books. So I gave one to my right and one to the left. And Alhamdulillah, they became uh, really uh, curious to look into it and to start reading it. So there are many books, by the way, the one that I would recommend all of you would be the top 50 questions people ask about Islam. And there are many other books, many other brochures that you can get from Gain, Peace and Why Islam. And you can use it, inshallah. So that is a really important tip that I want to offer to you, that have something with you on your person. So in that way, whenever a dawa opportunity arises, besides verbally conveying to them the message, you can always hand over some tangible item to them. And in that tangible item, may there be the brochure, the book, the one minute card, there should always be a contact information where they can go to yislam.org or gainpeace.com and give us a call if they have more questions. So let me ask you this quiz question. I know you're not able to converse with, the, uh, converse with me with audio, but just in your own mind, and don't try to Google this, by the way. What do you think is common between these four dates? 641, 648, 661, and 711. Okay, so not all the dates are starting with a six, right? So one of them is 7711. The common between these dates is that on these years and many other years, there were expeditions that went from Mecca, Medina, Africa, and different parts of the Muslim world to the non-Muslim land to convey to them the message of Islam. As you can see, Amr bin al-As, he went to the people of Egypt. Saad bin Abi Waqas, he went to the people of China, by the way. I forgot to write China up there, but he went to China along with other places. Uqba bin Nafi, he went to, Austria, to Algeria. And Tariq bin Ziyad, obviously we know he went to Spain to open the doors of Islam to the people out there. So when we hear or when we speak about Dawah, it's important for us to know that literally, you know, I mean, not literally, by the way, all, all of humanity is waiting for guidance. All of the non-Muslims. And this, this person's story comes to my mind. You know, Vaughn, I met him in Nashville, not too long ago, by the way, in July. As I stepped up on the member to give the Jummah Khutbah, I found out this person came inside the door. It was a small masjid. And he was wearing this army uniform and he sat down, like maybe fifth or sixth row in front of me. And I knew that, you know, he does not have the expression of a Muslim. He, it seems as if he's new to the, new to the uh, masjid, first time coming to the masjid. So after I was done with the Jummah Khutbah and the prayer, I approached him and I asked him the question, you are welcome to the mosque. What's your name? My name is Sabil. And he said that my name is Vaughn. I specially took off from my work. I work 45 minutes from here. And I told my boss, I need to go to the mosque and I get a longer break. So myself and a few other brothers, we invited him to the office and we sat down with him. And we asked him the question, you know, Vaughn, what brought you to the masjid, to the mosque? And one, he said that, you know, ever since I was little, I did not believe in Christianity. I always have doubts. I always was searching for the truth. I know, I knew that there is only one God. And I knew that Christianity is not that faith. So then one, he said that he started to join Judaism. Then he joined Buddhism. I mean, obviously Buddhists, they don't believe in God, by the way, but he still joined them just to get that inner peace. And I think he also joined the Hindu uh, faith. Means he started to read the Vedas and Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana. But then a friend of his on Facebook, he started to chat with that friend. And then that friend, the Muslim friend told Vaughn, you know, why don't you visit a mosque? Why don't you start reading the Quran? And then Vaughn did. He picked up a copy of the Quran from the close by bookstore. Then he came to the masjid. After half an hour of conversation, 
of his own choice won mention i really love it this was the faith i was waiting for how can i join the faith so alhamdulillah won an army personnel first time coming to the masjid you know his inner fitra got connected with the teachings of islam and alhamdulillah in that masjid he recited la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah and the main lesson from this story my dear muslims is really important the main lesson is humanity every single non muslim is a recipient for dawa and just like one there are literally millions of people who are waiting for the message of islam so when we look into the pages of the quran allah subhanahu wa taala obviously the first obligation that we have is to worship allah subhanahu wa taala and to pray and fast and zakat and hajj all of these are important but along with that many many places in the quran allah subhanahu wa taala he has not only encouraged us but he has obligated us to convey the message of islam in one of the ayahs of the quran that comes to my mind again would be from surah baqarah ayah number 185 where allah subhanahu wa taala says shahru ramadan allazi unzila fihi alquran hudal linnasi wa bayyinati min alhuda wal furqan that in the month of ramadan the quran was revealed as a guidance to all of humanity and as a criteria to distinguish between right and wrong so the quran that we read the quran that we benefit from the quran that we listen to especially in the month of ramadan the quran that we cherish that quran we don't have a monopoly on it that quran and its guidance and islam is in totality it is to be shared with rest of humanity it belongs to all of humanity and allah subhanahu wa taala chose you and us so really quickly when we look at the messengers and the prophets who allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned in the quran yes they gave charity they took care of the homeless the widows and the needy but if one mission comes to our mind when we combine all of the missions of every single prophet and messenger may that be adam alayhi salam all the way to prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam every single one of them if there is one primary mission of their whole life that mission is none other than dawa inviting humanity to worship the creator and not the creation and as we know that no new prophet is to come no new messenger is to come but islam has to continue that means that assignment that allah subhanahu wa taala only gave to the prophets and messengers now he has given it to you and me in a one more quranic ayah comes to my mind when it comes to uh, muslims becoming uh, uh, the witnesses to humanity this is in surah baqarah ayah number 143 but allah subhanahu wa taala says wa kazalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasata litakunu shuhada ala an-nas wa yakuna ar-rasulu alaykum shahida that you are made an ummah justly balanced that you become witnesses to humanity the way the messenger of allah is a witness over you so our recipients our recipients is not just uh, people in chicago new jersey dallas houston our recipient is all of humanity but let me ask you this question all of you right i mean just answer within your own families who are listening or just in your own mind what comes to your mind when you think of dawa you know like suppose if somebody says you know let's do dawa perhaps what may come to your mind may be a ikna dawa table maybe why islam may be having a table on the weekend right uh, maybe in some mall in california maybe gain peace is having some uh, some masjid open house and we want you to volunteer that is what comes to our mind usually but let me ask you this question how many mothers are here listening and those mothers and those fathers when you wake up in the morning do you have to consciously say to yourself you know let me be a mother today or let me be a father today from the fajr time to isha time you don't consciously say that because motherhood and fatherhood this is a state of mind in the same way my dear muslims dawa should be a state of mind it is not a weekend activity it is not giving 2 hours for dawa and the rest of the time for something else we should take dawa 
just like parenting, right? When we are parents, all of these things that you see up here, we want better future for our children. It's an obligation for us to take care of our kids. It's a responsibility, it's a cultural pressure. All of these combined, it gives us a state of mind to be a parent. In the same way, dawa should be a state of mind. It's an obligation that Allah has given. It's a necessity based on the Islamophobia that we, go, we are going through. For the love of humanity, for the mission that all the prophets used to carry, solutions for humanity, empathy for humanity, right? Incentive, inshallah, jannah, jannah for those. All of these combined together should give us a dawa is a state of mind. That means anytime, anywhere that you are, you can always do dawa in a subtle way, a direct way. You can plant a seed here and there and let it germinate, inshallah. So dawa is a state of mind. All right. Um, so what is involved in dawa, by the way, right? There are three main things which are involved in dawa. And knowledge is only one third of dawa, by the way. You know, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Balligu anni walo ayah. Convey from me even if it is one single ayah. So when it comes to dawa, knowledge is only one third. The second third has to do with how do you package the message? And the third third has to do with how do you not deliver the message? You know, that reminds me of a really important encounter that happened. I was in New York in the, there's a big masjid there. Forgot the name of the masjid. Uh, so we had an open house, uh, the Ikna open house up there. So after the open house was done, no, actually it was a Juma khutbah, right? And then the open house was the next day. So after I was done with the Juma khutbah, I was going with my, you know, brother uh, uh, Shahid, brother Shahid Farooqi. Me and him, we were walking towards his car. And lo and behold, there was a lady who came really quickly coming from the masjid and she approached me and she asked me the question, are you the one who was giving the Friday sermon? I said, yes. She said that this is the very first time she's coming to the mosque to learn about Islam. And she said, Alhamdulillah, that she has a few questions and me and brother Shahid, we stood on the sidewalk to answer the questions. After she was done, after we were done with responding, now she's ready, alhamdulillah, to take her shahada on the sidewalk right in front of the masjid. Now, here is the real story, by the way. There were a few other brothers who were around me. They were just listening to us. You know, I mean, alhamdulillah, people who want to take part in dawah conversation. So just before I helped this lady, the non-Muslim sister, to recite the shahada, a Muslim brother interrupted us and he said, looking at the lady, he said, you know, make sure that you firmly believe in Islam because once you enter Islam, you cannot leave Islam because if you leave Islam, then he showed to his neck, by the way, like she would be done with, right? And I was like, brother, what are you doing? I mean, don't scare her, let her take the shahada, inshallah. Use your hikmah. What happened to the wisdom? But long story short, Alhamdulillah, she, she, took, she still took the shahada. She's still satisfied, mashallah. But the main lesson that I learned is that we have to use hikmah, we have to package the message, and we have to properly deliver the message. So in the proper delivery of the message, I'm going to recommend every single one of you, by the way, is to take some classes on how to become good speakers or how to become good communicators. So communication is not only when you're standing on the stage and speaking. Communication can be when you are in the cafeteria and you're speaking with your non-Muslim friends about anything, especially about Islam. When you speak with your spouse, that is communication. When you speak with your you know, children, with your neighbor. So we have to develop communication skills along with having the knowledge of Dawah. All right. Uh, and also really important, then I'm going to wrap up, inshallah, I want to take as many questions. It's important for us to have knowledge of the world. And you may be thinking, you know, Brother Sabil, why should we have knowledge of the world? Like tomorrow, 
when you go back to work, inshallah, suppose if the conversation comes about, uh, is it the Washington, right? They won the World Series. You should take part in the conversation and you can steer the conversation towards in a subtle message of Islam. Maybe what does Islam say about sports? Why do you play the sports? What motivation that you got from when you're playing the sports or keeping the body healthy? So you can stir the conversation towards, inshallah, a spiritual conversation and an Islamic conversation. So a technique that I'm going to uh, give it to you is, inshallah, it would be the A, B, C, D technique, by the way. Okay, let me not, let me, let me not write it here. It is the A, B, C, D technique. So the A stands for, A stands for attract. B stands for that you break the ice and you build the bond. C stands for you speak about the commonalities between them and us and us and them. And D stands for now you deliver the message. So A stands for attract, right? Then I'm going to be finished inshallah, then we'll open the floor for Q&A. Attract means you say something or you do something that will make a person curious to ask questions to you. For example, you know, I was at, uh, so when I used to work in the hospital, there was a conversation between our colleagues, the doctors, the pharmacists and the staff members and we were just socializing and we were just chatting about, you know, how did we found our spouses? And I was just listening, right? So it's important to, to be part of the conversation, by the way. So I was just listening and every single one of them, they were saying, you know, how did they found their spouse? Some of them, they said, you know, they dated with their current spouse for, you know, two months or nine months or two years, and then they married them. Some other person was saying that, you know, they lived together with that person before they got married with that person. Every single one of them were saying exactly the same thing. Then my turn came and everyone looked at me, you know, Sabil, how did you found your spouse? And I mentioned to them, you know, I met my spouse, my spouse in a, or my spouse in the masjid, in the mosque. I spent five minutes with her, with her family, with her and my family with me. I only converse with her in front of our families for five minutes. After the conversation, I, I said, you know, she's the right person for me. And then I got married. And they were all looking at amazement, really, Sabil. How can you spend only five minutes and, and choose your marriage partner? So what am I doing is I'm building, I'm attracting them towards something I say. I'm making them curious. So they asked me the question, how can you spend five minutes? And I mentioned to them that this is the advice my religion gives me. Means Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, so I mentioned this to them, that our prophet mentioned, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he mentioned that when people look for a spouse to marry, the people look for these four things. Some people, they look for how wealthy the person is. Some people, they look for how beautiful or handsome the person is. Some people, they look for the status of the person, not the green card, by the way. And some people, they look for how spiritual the person is, how pious the person is, and the prophet said to go with this last attribute so your marriage can be successful. That's all I mentioned to them. And then from that day on, alhamdulillah, they kept on asking questions about Islam. They wanted to read the Quran. They wanted to know more about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, just to wrap up, my dear Muslims, it's so much important. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us the best of all the deens. This is the only deen that Allah has given to all the prophets and messengers. And now we are given that humongous honor, not just responsibility, that honor. If we fulfill the honor, inshallah, we will get the best in this world. Inshallah, Jannat if those in the hereafter. So I hope and pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us to not only know Islam, to live Islam, but to share the message of Islam with all of humanity. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
I will open the floor for any Q and A, inshallah. Okay, Zakalah Khair, Barakallah, Dr. Saab. So, Doc, uh, inshallah, if you can just tell us um, one question is, how how did you get into Dawa? Okay, how did I get got into Dawa? You know, as a teenager, so I came back from India, Hyderabad, India, by the way, about about 13, 14 years of age, or approximately that age. So I joined the high school over here, but I was just like a regular, you know, cultural Muslim, I would say. My parents, you know, one important thing that we as parents, we should do, and this is a lesson for me and all of us. My parents, they always used to watch on the VCR, right? Some of you may remember the VCR. They used to watch Islamic lectures. They used to borrow, they used to rent out. And they used to always tell me, you know, Sabil, come out from your room and watch the videos with us. Sometimes I used to watch with them. Other times I used to be in the room with the excuse that, you know, I have homework. I have exam. One day they brought a video and they told me, you know, Sabil, even if you have the final exam tomorrow, just come and watch, spend a few minutes with us. Come and watch this video with us. And Alhamdulillah, I watched the video and that changed my life. But then you may be asking, right, Brother Razad, that Sabil, what exactly was that video? 99% mm. of you, you may have guessed who that person in the video. I will give you some, some hint, Brother yeah, Razad, that you can give me the answer, okay? The topic of the video was Islam and Christianity. Yes, yes. We know it was this. a symposium between, uh, between, a, between a Christian preacher who converted to Islam and a Dai from South Africa. Africa. That's all right. the hints you get, by the way. Who is that person? <laughs> yes, okay. I mean, I, I know the person, uh, one person said Zakir Naik, but I'm I'm waiting for Yusuf Estes, Ahmed Didad. Okay, okay. So overwhelmingly, majority, mashallah, all of the people say Ahmed Didad. Because I said South Africa, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Yusuf Estes is not yeah. from South Africa. He's right, from right, the... right, 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 right. Uh, so, okay. You... They so answered before they, you said South Africa. So we have an uh, overwhelming majority oh says Ahmadida. So in that video, you know what? In that video, the way that he was answering, responding to the questions, you know, before that video, I was thinking that, you know, Islam is just a blind faith. Islam, you know, Christianity is there, Judaism is there, and then Islam is there. I'm a Muslim because my parents are Muslims. But the way that he was responding to the questions, using the evidence from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from, from uh, history and science and logic, and the way that he had a command of comparative religion, that motivated me thinking that, you know, Islam is the right faith. And this is the faith that we should be sharing with the humanity. This is the guidance. So that video was a life changing event, alhamdulillah, that Allah has, you know, made me what I am. But obviously, thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and through that, alhamdulillah, our Sheikh Ahmad Deidat, rahimallah. Okay, and the next question, um, Dr. Saab, is that someone wanted to know, how do you start a dawah conversation? So, you know, the plane, the story on the plane that I mentioned initially, I will just give you the way that I started the conversation with these people. So not only the two people next to me, as I was speaking, there were people surrounding me, right? They were just, you know, watching me over the shoulder to see what is going on here. So both of them, they had the headphones on, by the way, the person to my right, the person to my left. And, you know, how can you do dawah when they're not even, you know, I mean, they're so fo focused in their own lectures and whatnot. So as soon as the flight attendant came with um, whatever, right, uh, juice and water and, um, you know, peanuts, as they were conversing with her, I also helped them because the person on, on my right, that person was on the window, so I helped uh, giving that person from the flight attendant, whatever, the juice or so. So that was the instant report that I thought I built with the person. Then in a nice, soft voice, by the way, not in a commanding voice, not in a inquisitive voice, but in a nice, soft voice with a smile, I, I asked that person, that brother, have you, uh, you know, where are you going to? And he said, that uh, they're going to uh, Houston, then from there to Dallas. Mm -hmm. I asked them the question, have you ever been to Chicago? They said, no. 
I mentioned to them, if you come to Chicago, there's a big army and Navy base up there. And uh, I also go there to do some counseling. That's what I said to them. You can see right now, I did not say anything about Islam, anything about Muslims, the Quran, the guidance. I'm trying to raise their interest, by the way. The A is to attract. Yes. I'm raising their interest. And then they asked me the question, so what do you do up there? I said that I help people to find peace and purpose in their life. Now their eyes you know, became wider in amazement. Really? How do you do that? Once they ask you, how do you do that? 50% of the dawah is done, by the way. Now they're asking you question in the plane, alhamdulillah, right? So I mentioned to them through God's guidance. And then 60% of the dawah is done, by the way, right? And then the rest of the questions they were asking about the guidance, about concept of God, about the prophethood. And I, I kept on making them interested. So they asked me the questions and then I can supply the answer. So that's how I break the ice, right? A, B, C, D. A to B to build the bonds. C is to talk about commonalities and D is now to deliver the message. Yes. So that is my, um, so that's uh, my pickup line, by the way, in the place. Nice. Very good, Mishmala. Exactly. Right. Okay. Well, and, yeah. uh, so, so the next question is, and I know this is, um, you have a, a very good answer for this, is how do we, how do we become uh, better speakers? Better speakers, I would say. Communicators. Right, right. So the better word would be better communicators, right? I would yes. say join Toastmasters. Toastmasters. Yeah, join Toastmasters. Um, let me just write down over. Okay, good. I'm able to write down here if you're able to see my screen. Toastmastermasters.com. So once you go there, um, so Toastmasters is a club. People are just like you and me. They they come there to to increase to enhance their speaking ability. And once you go to the website, the homepage of Toastmasters.com, there will be a Find My Club. Enter your zip code, and you will see all the clubs which are close to you. And and you can filter it out based upon the day, the time that you are available to go there. So the way it works is. Every single person takes some role in the Toastmaster, like four or five people, they give speeches. And then after they're done with the speech, people come and evaluate the speech, all the good things that you have done, all the things that you need to improve, how many ums and ahs and you knows and you like that you have done. And the next time when you give the speech, you're supposed to uh, retain all the good things that you have done and avoid or enhance on the things that you need to master. So week by week, month by month, inshallah, you will see the improvement. So I have been on and off with Toastmasters since 2009, by the way. So if there is one advice I would give all of us would be join Toastmasters. We have the best religion. We have to be the best ambassadors and the best communicators. And inshallah, Toastmasters will help us. Zakallah, thank you. Um, someone had a, a really good question as well. One of the brothers said, Salaamu Alaikum, or I'm sorry, a, a person said, uh, Salaam Alaikum. What is the best way to do dawah in your neighborhood that you live in? MashaAllah, you know, this is a good question. I mean, all the questions are good, MashaAllah, right? Yeah. You know, usually when I speak about dawah or when we hear about dawah, it's so important for us. Me being in Chicago, the people, non-Muslims in Alaska may not hold me responsible, but my neighbors around me may hold me responsible definitely on the Day of Judgment that Sabil used to live amongst us. I used to see him picking up the kids, dropping the kids and going inside the home to the car, but he never conveyed to us the message. So our, my immediate neighbors, we have initial responsibility. So how do we convey the message? First and foremost, we need to introduce ourselves. If you are new to your neighborhood, just, you know, just take a walk around the neighborhood, maybe every day, maybe once a week or so. So be visible physically in the neighborhood, right? Number one. Number two, what we have done is, myself and my family, on monthly basis, especially when it comes to the Ramadan and the Eids, we go around and we give gifts to the people or to the families around us. Most of the time, we don't even have the Islam card in there, by the way, because we don't want to appear as if we are pushing Islam. 
later on you can give by the way but initially you need to have that soft uh, connection with them and you know snow sometimes is a blessing right i mean always it's a blessing by the way take care of your neighbors and it doesn't have to be only on the snow and there is also a sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if the masjid is close to you or whatever neighborhood masjid invite them to the masjid just to show them around and especially if you have an and when you have an open house and once you become comfortable with them and they become comfortable with you invite them to your homes and go to their homes too by the way just make sure that the dog is locked up you know that's what is so invite them to your house and socialize with them and you know when once they see this nice calligraphy around your house automatically that may generate some questions within their head you know what does it say that looks so beautiful and then you can say that you know that is a that is a passage from the quran and then you can translate and that will generate more questions within their hearts and minds so in a really quick way these are some of the ways that we can inshallah break the ice and share the message of islam with our immediate neighbors inshallah okay so okay thank you so here's another question assalamu alaikum every sunday two guys from the neighborhood comes uh from the church and they preach he needs to know how does he introduce islam to them okay this is wonderful i think they come on saturday i guess right not sunday they come on saturday no they say sunday here so i'm not sure oh, they come on sunday okay uh they may be jehovah's witnesses or they may maybe not right but let me just quickly mention one story by the way so there is a brother and this is a real story and this was mentioned to me in uh, louisville one of the brothers came there for the open house so there was a knock on saturday morning and uh, the muslim family they opened the door and they found out that there are two individuals standing in front of them the brother you know the head of the household the family they got so excited now we can share islam with them so they invited the family the two individuals inside and they had literally an hour of conversation back and forth the guests are speaking about christianity and the muslim family speaking about islam back and forth dialogue debate what not at the end of that one hour the christian individual asked one question to this muslim family and after asking that one question the muslim family and that brother they were utterly defeated they didn't have anything to say no counter argument from the muslim family by the way and brother azad is wondering you know what happened i mean how right, can right, right, any right. question that we can be speechless the brother was utterly speechless if i were that muslim family brother azad i would be speechless i would not have any answer to that by the way none of us may have answer and this is the question that they asked just just listen to this the christian person asked the muslim brother the question if you are so passionate about islam why don't you come outside every saturday the way that we do and share your message with the whole neighborhood with humanity how come you're sitting inside no response right so it's really important when people come to us we should be going by the way but i would say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent them to us so what the way that i would uh, start a conversation with them is i would first and foremost because they sh- came to share their message i would make i will make a bargain with them if you brought something to give it to me i will listen to you but i have one brochure please take it this is for your own education right number 1 number 2 if they speak for 5 minutes you also take equal time to speak for 5 minutes but in that speaking of 5 minutes make sure that you don't put down their faith you don't make them defensive but in a crystal clear way you share with them the concept of tauhid the absolute oneness of god with a smile connecting with them giving them proper analogies right so it's important um, you know later on i think i have one more webinar coming up in which i will share how do you share islam in 5 minutes so basically you every point that you make you you connect that point with the absolute oneness of god and allah's wisdom allah's guidance the quran the wonderful solutions and obviously do not forget the concept of the of the hereafter 
And last but not the least, Brother Azad, it's important for us Muslims to know some working knowledge of other faiths. So just imagine, if two hours go by, if we are having a conversation with a Bible believer, and we keep on saying that, you know what, we don't agree that Jesus is God, we don't agree that Trinity is true, and then you go into the history of it. But after the end of two words, suppose if the person says, you know, I agree with you, we don't believe in Trinity, we don't believe that, Je that Jesus is God. And you may be wondering, you know, really? But I thought you guys are Christians. You don't believe in Jesus to be God? No, they may be Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to have some working knowledge of other faiths so we can properly package our message so it can be impactful to the recipients, inshallah. Exactly. Thank you. And I think two questions uh, could be summarized in one. Uh, how can you be more comfortable with small talk, uh, not public speaking? And then the second one is people always come around and strike up conversation. And they always, you know, wanted to have a talk about the dean or what. Uh, he's saying that some people always over speak when he, when he's having a conversation. So, uh, how do you address these? Like becoming more comfortable and and it's sort of intelligent in in presenting, uh, even just a general conversation, not not really. Uh... Right, right. You know, obviously, uh, we need to look into the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, communication is not speaking only, communication is, is also listening. Very important. It's so important that, you know, it's uh, it may be just the Desi culture, I don't know, or it may be just whatever culture. Many a times uh, we interrupt a person when he or she is speaking. Let them finish what they say, let them exhaust what they say, and then when you once you start to speak, that's when inshallah they would be able to listen. And it just goes with politeness, right? That's number one. Number two is we should not, when we speak, we should not overwhelm them with all of Quran, all of the nine volumes of Bukhari, four volumes mm -hmm. of Muslim. We need to make sure that we be are to the point, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And by looking at their facial expressions, uh, they're, uh, you know, they're agreeing with us, disagreeing with us and whatnot then we keep on planting the seed. For example, if a person comes to the Dawah booth and in the short time they introduce themselves as being a Christian or, or any faith, Jewish faith, ask them certain, quite no, not ask, share with them certain aspect of Islam that will make them interested to stay there longer and to ask questions. For example, if I'm conversing to a Jewish visitor to the Dawah booth, I should have certain facts about Islam that will make them curious to learn more about Islam. For example, I may ask them this question. You know, Matthew, can you guess who is the most mentioned prophet by name in the Quran? And then I can give Matthew a hint. I can say to him that that person is also the greatest prophet of the Old Testament, means the greatest Jewish prophet of all time. So what is the answer, Brother Azad? Oh, yeah. yeah. Moses, alayhi salam. Right. If I'm conversing to a, to, a, to a Christian person, I may say to them, you know, uh, that Mary is the only person, or only lady mentioned by name in the Quran, 32 times in the Quran, and 18 times in the New Testament. Then if mm -hmm. I have more time, I can mention to her, Surah 3, Ayah 42, that God has chosen her, purified her, and chosen her to be, um, you know, over all the other ladies. So these kind of questions or these kind of uh, sharing of the facts will make them stay and make them curious, and then you can start the rest of the conversation about other points. Oh, is that okay? Thank you. Okay, um, I want to finish up with one last question, Nasab. I mean, we have several more questions, but I just wanted to finish up with one. Um, and, and it's from a, a sister. She says that in college, there's often people giving dawah, I mean, preaching, and, but, uh, and not, not Muslim pre um, dawah, but they're atheists or other religion, but they're always yelling and screaming. And, and she's a sister on college campus. How does she respond to this? But I want you to, to answer it in sort of like, uh, I mean, non-verbal way. Uh, as Muslims, is dawah always having to communicate with people 
through our words or can it also be through actions? Okay, Alhamdulillah. You know, uh, when it comes to religion, when it comes to Islam, it's uh, many of us, we become emotional and sometimes our emotions take the best of us and uh, our hikmah goes down the drain sometimes. And now it starts like a shouting match. It's a debate between, you know, Tawheed and Trinity, uh, sonship of Jesus against the prophethood of Jesus. It's important for us to know that our example is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is not our emotions. It is not our opponent. It is not the guest who come to the masjid. Uh, it is not anything, by the way. It's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as the Quran says. In Surah 33, Ayah number 21. lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanatul liman kana yarjullaha wal yawm al wa that in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example to follow. For those who believe in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much. So anytime when we are doing anything, saying anything, interacting with anyone, first and foremost, we need to realize that how would the Prophet behave if he were in our situation? So we need to calibrate and recalibrate ourselves uh, with the person of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's important that even before he was given the mission of prophethood, he was a helper to humanity by his good actions. You know, when the first wahi came, by the way, in Surah Al Allah, and he came to his wife and he was stressed out because of the uh, you know, strangeness of the wahi. But his wife consoled him, you know, Khatija Razi Allah Ta'ala Anha. You know, Allah is not going to disown you because you're good to your neighbors, you're good to your guests, you take care of the widows and you take care of the homeless, the helpless. So the credibility and the actions, they speak louder than any words. Once we build a rapport with the person and once we have the credibility, then when we speak about anything in a nice, soft way, with a smile, uh, without overwhelming the person, the person may be more receptive at that time, inshallah. So I would say that any interaction, any words that we say, it has to, uh, uh, you know, align with the noble person of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there are many things a person can do, especially on the college campuses, by the way. You know, just being an exemplary student in the class itself will win credibility uh, from the students and from the teacher. You know, a, a quick 30-second uh, story, by the way. So there is a brother in Chicago who was going to a community college. He was taking the humanities class and he prayed to Allah that Allah, I know that it is not allowed in the class to preach Islam, but please make it possible so I can share the message with every single student and the teacher. The very first day the teacher was having some trouble connecting the laptop with the PowerPoint. The Muslim brother, he stood up and he ran to the teacher, helped the teacher out, building the rapport right away. All throughout the semester, he used to be exemplary student, completing the assignment, getting, you know, A's in all the assignments, homeworks and quizzes. One day, as the class was touching upon the topic of Islam in the textbook, he approached the teacher and he mentioned to her, you know, the, the book is excellent, the chapter is excellent about Islam, but there are a few errors in the chapter when it speaks about Islam. Right away, the teacher turned to the student and she said, can you give a 15 minute presentation to the class next week? Mm. And the brother came back to the teacher and said, you know, there is an organization that I volunteered to have a free copies of the Quran English translation, a few brochures, can I bring those? And right away the teacher said, yes. So on the day of the class, he brought copies of the Quran and the brochures and the students before they sat down, the teacher said, take a copy of the Quran and the brochures before you sit down. 15 minutes started for the presentation. The teacher was asking questions. The students were asking questions. And the teacher said, why don't you take the whole hour? And the brother took the whole hour, right? Again, the moral of the story is actions speak louder. We need to have credibility. We need to, you know, um, we need to, by our smile, by our good actions, building the rapport. And once we speak, it will have more impact from heart to heart, inshallah. Thank you so much. Inshallah.
And um, can you tell us a little bit more about, and, and you, you can finish with this, inshallah, and just close off with uh, a, a small dua. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Gain Peace, and uh, you can close off, inshallah. We have nine minutes, right, for the result? Uh, yeah, if you if you want. I mean, yeah, we, we're sort of on time. Yeah, 45, yeah. actually. But go ahead. Uh, alhamdulillah, we still have uh, 200, uh, get, at least 200 guests still around. So if you want to continue. Yeah, I'm okay with that because, you know, I'm just rushing my quiet, my answers, by the way, looking at the time. But if you have, you know, okay, so really quickly, then we can take a few more questions. So Gain Peace is a Dawa, is a Dawa organization, which is part of ICNA. Just like you have Vai Islam and Embrace, Gain Peace was started by brothers and ICNA brothers from Chicago in the Midwest. We focus on three things, by the way. Number one, we want to empower our own Muslims. We need to remind them and empower them on how to properly share the message of Islam, how to respond to some of the questions people may be asking about Islam. So that's one area. The second area Gain Peace focuses would be on sharing Islam with non-Muslims. Uh, so we have specialized in the masjid open houses, inviting non-Muslims to share the message of Islam with them. So last year we had about 75 open houses. So I would say that of all the things that we do in Dawa, open houses is one of the most effective ways. Then we use the billboards, the TV, the radio, mailing postcards to the people, Dawa booths, uh, street Dawa, schools and colleges and neighborhood. So these are this is the second area that Gain Peace focuses and specializes. And the third area would be to take care of the new Muslims. It's so important. You know, Shahadas, Alhamdulillah, Allah guides them but now it is our responsibility to take care of them. So we have a shahada package that we give out to them. Secondly, we have mentorship training. Thirdly, we have on-site classes and online classes. And fourthly, we have dawa conferences and many social and educational get-togethers for the brothers and sisters who are new to Islam. So anyone who would like to know more can go to gainpeace.com and if you would like to get more literature, like the one minute cards and the unique brochures we have and the mailers we have, and especially the Dawa book, especially I give out to people on the plane and the strangers and, and the neighborhood, you can find those books online, inshallah, by going to gainpeace.com. Uh, uh, both. Okay, mashallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So that's a brief overview of Gain Peace. Okay, Zakallah And um, someone wanted to ask, and which is uh, sort of like an, uh, uh, very relevant uh, to, to even today. How can you do Dawah during the holidays, Halloweens? Oh, during Halloween. How do you? Okay, no, no, sure. no hol holiday, holiday. But I'm just mentioning today is. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, may Allah bless your brothers and sisters, mashallah, for, you know, hundreds of brothers and sisters uh, coming here to learn about, you know, how to present Islam in a very compassionate and cohesive manner uh, instead of, you know, being out there. So may Allah reward you, you all tremendously. But how do you do that during the holidays? You know, any holiday season is an excuse for us to share the message. We can incite always the conversation, by the way. For example, um, Okay, so let's start with today, right? Today is uh, quote unquote Halloween, all right? I mean, even though we as Muslims, we don't celebrate because of whatever the context in which they celebrate this uh, day. So what we do is our family, as kids and the, you know, non-Muslim kids and the neighbors, when they come to our house for candy and, yeah, for candy, you know, they only come for candy, by the way. So we have healthy candy, by the way, like, um, you know, this, uh, this, nutrition bars we give it we give those to them number one and we also have uh, the one minute card or a brochure that we also put inside uh, the bag or the container of that kid or the kids who come to us if there are any adults coming i step out and i converse with them and i also share this one minute card with them that you know just stay safe let's uh, have our kid, uh, kids be healthy and safe and uh, you know this is a small gift of education to you so it's important to take that opportunity, thinking that Allah has sent them to us to knock at the door so we can share the message. When it comes to Christmas, by the way, it's you know it becomes even easier when people are in the mood about Jesus and celebrating you know his birth. 
it's important for us to incite to them saying that you know muslims also celebrate the mission of jesus not the birth of jesus by the way the mission of jesus and the mission of jesus is mentioned in the quran and also in the bible his mission is inna allaha rabbi wa rabbukum fa'budu haza siratan mustaqim surah number 3 ayah number 51 isa alayhi salam is quoted in the quran in saying that verily god allah is my lord and your lord worship him alone and that is the straight path so mentioning something about isa alayhi salam from the quran that you know there are miracles in the quran which are not even there in the bible can you guess what those miracles are right i mean i will say that to my christian friend for example that itself is going to incite conversation that will lead to the message of jesus that will lead to speaking about tawhid when it comes to uh, you know obviously thanksgiving it's easy for us to say that you know this life and the blessing that allah has given to us thanksgiving we do it every day with our families and obviously this special day we also celebrate giving thanks to the creator himself when it comes to ramadan and other holidays obviously you know likewise uh, giving gifts to the people uh, we have a standard letter that we give out to the neighbors if we have any gift we mention to them if we give any dates and any you know can of honey and what not some of the spirit some of the physical benefits and how these are also recommended in the quran or through the prophet sunnah just to incite them some kind of a curiosity so any time is easy by the way but holiday time becomes easier for us to convey the message but the important thing is we should not appear as if you are imposing islam but raise their interest and raise raise their uh, you know a uh, reflection of islam by saying something and doing doing something once they start asking questions now it becomes a fair game for us to share more about islam with them zakla khair thank you so much inshallah if you can wrap up uh, with the closing dua inshallah we will finish okay alhamdulillah may allah reward uh, each single one of you for giving your time one hour it's not easy by the way life is so hectic it's so stressful so busy but again just to summarize this honor of doing dawa could have been given by allah subhanahu wa taala to the hindus the jews the christians the atheists but allah has chosen you and me to be the umma of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to and to, has given us the honor of sharing the message so i hope and pray that may allah subhanahu wa taala help us so let's do the dua that allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina muhammad wa barik wasallam ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير وانا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته